All right, we are about to feed my indoor worm bin. This is the second tray um, that we just built about six days ago where I did a feeding and been just checking the top, seeing uh, how they're doing, not digging in or anything. Um, and it just kind of seemed to me like um, probably need to feed them a little bit earlier than the seven day mark. So it's day six. Um, I didn't give them a huge feeding when we started the tray or bin, but um, I think that's what we're gonna do now. Now this tray or bin was built um, with uh, about a third of the tray below it. And, and I say tray and bin interchangeably, but using about a third of the um, contents of the tray below it. Um, and then a bunch of shredded cardboard boxes um, to make the bedding for this one. So I'm gonna, I probably don't need to add bedding, but we'll just kind of see how it goes. So here we go. Now in this verm, this is a vermi hut that I use for the indoor bin. And um, these worms like to go all over. So they'll go up into the top and um, they'll go down to the lower level. Um, they don't escape from it, um, but I definitely see some on the lid and stuff, and then you can probably see along the edges, the castings, meaning that they've gone up, up and down. So here's our feeding indicator where we fed last, and it was right in the middle. So that's where this first and only feeding of this tray was. Again, I'm on the second level of their Vermahut condo. So I'm just gonna Go right for the right for the gusto and see what we got here. Definitely have a bunch of worms, not necessarily the worm ball. Um, because all that food that was in there is completely gone. I don't recognize any kind of food stuffs at all. I'm sure there's little particles and shreds in there because there are a lot of worms here. But it definitely feels different than the other tray below it because that one was made with cocoa choir or cocoa core, however you say it. Um, completely none of the boxing material. There's a little bit of green stuff left. Um, and it's, it's much uh, shallower. Um, then that other one, the other one was getting out of hand, which is why I added this other tray, not because I was ready to harvest or anything, but there's worms throughout. Definitely, you can see some other critters moving, mites or something probably more visible to me too, just because of the different bedding. But you can see below it the maybe Hopefully you can see below it kind of a, the cross hatching here. Some, you know, the bottom of the, the bin or tray um, is almost like a checkerboard with holes through it, um, tiny, tiny square holes. Um, so the worms can come up and down from bin to bin as they please, with the goal being that as you populate this top bin, uppermost bin with food, that they would want to come there. And uh, the very bottom bin, you would have the finished castings. And my goal is to get this thing about four high, and then every month I'm harvesting a bin and putting a new bin on top. Um, it comes with five trays, I think, or bins in, in um, I like to use one of them to put finished castings in and shake it and get those to um, come out the bottom so that you have uh, finished castings, you know, really tiny 
sorted, finished castings. There are a lot of worms everywhere throughout, so they have definitely found the top. And the only worms that were originally up here were the worms that came with it when I did about the third of um, the third mix in here, and I wasn't specifically going for any worms. But there's a good, good amount. So I think we will, I think we'll feed on one of these sides here. That may be what we're gonna do. Um, we could do the pocket feeding. Some people do a pocket and then each week or each feeding time they feed in a different spot. And we may do that, but I like digging the trench. I'll start with the trench and maybe go to pocket feeding and then maybe back to the trench. But right now, these worms are definitely, they've definitely come in here from the bottom. Now I'm agitating the heck out of them, so they may rush back down. But once I put this food in, they are going to be just fine and happy. So I'm just going to kind of eat it out and start from scratch. Lots of worms, lots of, got thick worm here with thick clotone which is the band just after the head. All right, I'm just gonna break up what we got here. I am not gonna use any new bedding. I think it's, it has a lot in there. Just skip it this time and then I'll go for it next time. But I think we'll, we'll dig a trench right here. And that will be where we feed. And then I'll put the feeding zone indicator back there. The other way you can tell is um, as they eat the food, uh, this portion tends to get lower. So you'll see a depression and know that that's most likely where you had last fed. So what I like to start with is the bedding, but we already have a bunch. I'll just kind of congregate it down here, help kind of absorb the, the frozen food. I freeze the veggies and um, when they melt, that moisture ends up coming out of it and they like that. And this bedding will help to kind of absorb it. We'll go ahead and, and start with the veggies. So this um, is what comes out the back of our juicer. This is pineapple, you can see some berries, but a lot of broccoli. Um, and I just end up throwing this stuff in here and then freezing it. And they really enjoy it. It is <laughs> very colorful and super fine, super shredded, almost by the time it gets melted and frozen and melted, it's almost mush. And I find that they, they go through it pretty quick. So we'll give them a bunch of this. And then what we'll also do is give them some whole things like these strawberries. And these are just strawberries that just lasted too long. Or I should say didn't last too long. So not quite good enough for us to eat, but plenty good for the worms. This looks like a portion of an apple. This is gonna be a pretty substantial feeding here. this doesn't get them the majority of them up here, I don't know what will, because this is all worm goodness here. All right, let's see what we got in this one. Maybe a little bit more, maybe another apple. Or this is a peach. I'm 
always surprised how much they can eat. There's some kiwi. A little kiwi we'll throw in there. And then the strawberry tops, that's kind of a no-brainer. Save those and give them to the worms. I think this will do. I think this is a lot of food. And then we save our coffee and tea for them. Just kind of cover it up. Looks like some mold got to this one. All right, <laughs> I'm just gonna give it all to them. We may be going a little bit more than a week on this feeding, we'll have to see. And I may come in here and check about halfway just to see how they're doing. Because this is, this is more than I've given in the past, I think. This is their second feeding. Um, about six days since I created this bin. And I think we're about 55 days from when I started the whole Vermi Hut system um, with 2,000 worms. So they are definitely acclimated to it and they should be making cocoons, which I have seen through here. I wasn't really looking when we started, but they'll, they're definitely, um, if I got young worms, which I think I did, then they are getting to the age where they would be full grown adults capable of reproducing. So that may be where we're at now, where they're, where they are um, gonna start making cocoons. And I've been seeing them on the lid a little bit more. I don't know if it's cause it's a new bin, if it's, um, you know, and my outdoor worm bin, I see them a lot at the top. I see a lot of mating pairs at the top, so I don't know if uh, they're starting to come up and mate. So that's why I'm seeing more on the lid congregating together. And it's not a whole lot. It's just more than I had seen in the past. Usually it's like one or two. So if anybody, if anybody witnesses or sees the same thing, when they start to mate, if they come to the top, let me know or... I see that in some of the witty, some of the videos that I watch. Um, people saying that they uh, see the mating pairs at the top. But there we go. I don't know if you can tell from the camera angle, but there's I've. This is a little bit higher than the rest of the bin. Um, it's because I gave them a pretty substantial feeding, so the moisture level felt right. Everything feels good. They look good. Um, all these white dots you see here is just the eggshells that I use for grit. Um, I did see a little bit of mite action, but there is not a whole lot. Um, as I stand here, as I sit here and try and see if I see a lot of movement. So that will do it. I'm just going to put the feeding zone indicator on here and relay out the newspaper. And I think that will, that will do it. If you like the video, let me know what you like about it or what you'd like to see. I just film in each feeding. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. And we will see you the next time we jump into this worm bin, either the next feeding or maybe a midterm check on this uh, feeding zone that I just fed. All right, take care.